uh, we're here, we're back in, in one of the, uh, the, the crime laboratories. Is this, is this the biology lab? Or Forensic the, biology. This is for, okay. Classroom. This is Kirsten, this is Stacy. say hi girls. Hi, okay, they're part of the really wonderful workshop that we started to do through LAVA. And today, we are gonna, uh, they're, we're, gonna we're back to my, my two favorite uh, topics, blood and semen. And we're gonna do some presumptive testing on blood and semen. And then once we get through these real basic um, tests, which are both uh, tests that can be done on site at the crime scene and then back in the lab, mm -hmm. uh, we'll let you to uh, just get into your own work in these substances, which is of course very interesting. So so let's uh, take it away. Kristen, take it away. So what, what are we going to do? Okay, we are doing a presumptive test for blood for just basic identification purposes. And so the evidence is inside of a paper bag. This way, if it was in plastic, then plastic would uh, hold in humidity, create moisture, and possibly fungus and bacteria would grow, which would uh, not preserve our evidence. So we keep it in a paper bag. Oh, let me interrupt you for a second. Um, not this test, we're going to be looking at other tests in this video that could be done on site at the crime scene. This is so very easy. This is a very common test. Uh, LAPD uses this test I will be using and they do it at vehicle searches and at the crime scene. Perfect. Very easy. Okay, so we have our evidence sample here. It's a little messy, but we have uh, blood stains. So what, what, we, what we think are blood stains. What we think, think are blood stains. At this point, we do not know. We just would report it as a you know, reddish brown dry stain on a cloth. So we have this here. And what we do first is remove a swab. Oh, wait, I noticed that there's a mask. Oh, yes. Okay. Just, just if for, this for was a real piece of evidence, I would actually wear a face mask. And then we couldn't hear you. But then, yes, I would muffle my voice. <laughs> so I would wear a face mask because my DNA right now, as I speak, could be contaminating the piece of evidence. So before even starting and working on the piece of evidence, we would do a positive and negative control just to ensure that our reagents are working properly. So a negative control would just be to not swab anything. And that would then we would add our chemicals first. We would add the phenophthalene, which is where the name of the test comes from. It's a color reagent. I'll add two drops. We see nothing at this point, which is how it should be. And next we add 3% hydrogen peroxide. These are nice bottles. They're nice. Okay, and it is a negative result. There is no color change. This is a color test. And because this is a negative control, we expect a negative result. So, so far we know that our swabs are not contaminated, okay? Next we would do a positive uh, control and that would be to swab a known source of blood. Um, as far as I don't have anything right now that we know is a source of blood, that would be maybe a cassette of pig's blood. I would swab the cassette of pig's blood, the known source, run the same test and because it's a positive control we expect a positive result. So we're just going to assume that. We're going to assume that I did that, and that would mean that if everything worked out well, that our reagents are working properly. Okay, so now let's actually test our piece of evidence. First, because it is a dry sample, I am going to moisten our swab with the distilled water. And I will rub it against the part that I would like to test. I'm going to move this piece back okay. and add the shot. And I'm just going to gently rub an area that I would like to know if whether or not the stain is blood. And I have a brownish transfer stain onto this swab. So next I'll add that phenophthalene, which is the color reagent. I'm going to add two drops. We should not see a color change at this point, not until we add the hydrogen peroxide. So if it is blood, we should see a bright pink color produce. Hey, bravo. And there we have it. And this is a presumptive test, so it is a positive identification for blood, but it would always have to go on to be confirmed right. for another test. So this is something, if it's done in, in on the scene or immediately once it gets to the lab, it's just, yes, this is most likely blood, let's mm -hmm. keep moving forward. Keep or moving if forward. it's not blood, let's start looking at yes. stuff. 
There are confirmatory tests for blood. They aren't used as often anymore. This would most likely go straight on to DNA, DNA analysis. Very good. Okay, so we've just tested this positive. This, this is a presumptive yes. test. We've got a color change, so we've got blood. Probably send this on to DNA at yes. this point. You're, yes. you're confident that this is blood. Are there any other things that it, well, yeah. Well, not completely confident because other things can react with this, uh, with these chemicals, such as uh, plant sources, vegetables, uh, potatoes, horseradish, could also cause a positive result. That is why you always have to do a confirmatory test after this test. Okay. But if there's a negative result, we don't do anything. If right. it's a positive and it's, result, it's, it, it's, something, it it's something else and it's not blood and it just goes back in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. So that's so that's just that's that's the basic getting getting something in. It's blood, yay, yeah. nay, moving Straight on. Straight test for blood. Okay, very, very good. And Stacy, are you ready? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna scoot on down and we're gonna move on. Talk about the uh, the other bodily fluid, which is important in forensic investigation. We're gonna talk about semen. Yes. Okay. Uh, you two both do a lot. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll, we'll both get to your graduate research in a moment. So what are, what are we here to do today? Right. So um, like Kristen's uh, chemical test for blood, there is a similar and equivalent chemical test for semen. But we're not going to look at that today because it is so similar. What we're going to look at is a um, physical test, which is a light source. Okay. So we're using a special light source. Um, we use blue light from 430 nanometers to 470 nanometers. And we're going to examine um, clothing to see if there's any potential semen stains. Okay, very good. I think we should give the uh, give a moment so the camera operator can get the special lenses. Yes. Yes. So we, we don't we don't want any break in continuity. We don't want to. Uh, yeah. So we have special. And I'm gonna I'm gonna turn away. Okay, we have a special eyewear and a special filter in this eyewear specifically um, to look through and, and see the fluorescence of the actual stain. Okay. So uh, again, this let's start as we do with Kirsten. Um, this is a piece of evidence. We could be at the crime scene still. Yes. Potentially. It, Potentially we. Yeah, you can look for stains on sofas, on blankets, um, any cloth material or carpets will fluoresce. And is this a test then that once it's identified at the crime scene, if, if maybe uh, someone identifies it without this specific test as semen, it could come into the crime, it could come into the lab and then we would do this test here too? Yes, it can be performed um, anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, right, so let's, all right, so we've got this shirt. What are we okay. going to do? Well, initially, um, as you can see on the shirt, I don't know if you can see, um, you just want to visually examine for any type of stains at all. There might be food stains, there might be biological stains. Um, and in this general area, I observe that there's a like whitish stain um, on this black shirt. So it's going to be in this area. And so what I'm going to focus on is that, that area to look, see if there's a stain. But I can also examine the whole garment, of course. Okay, so um, you, you want to focus on that area, so yes. let's, all right, I'm going to turn away, let's go. Okay. You have to turn the lights off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Better performed in the dark, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So, as you can see, that area that was of interest is definitely fluorescing. So what we could do next is uh, do a chemical test or cut a swatch out and move it on to DNA analysis. That sounds good. Okay, so can I do my back on? Yes. Okay, great. When I take my gloves off, I'm not, I'm not going to handle any more evidence. Okay. Okay, good. So, uh, all right, and then I see we have another shirt. Is there. Um, are we going to do something? Is there? Did you just check to see if it fluoresced? I did not check to see if it fluoresces. So I applied um, a sample of known seminal fluid uh, to this shirt, and sometimes the fresher stains don't fluoresce as much. Oh, okay. Sometimes they need to dry out before the, pro the proteins really fluoresce. Okay, yeah. so that's that's we'll, we'll we'll leave that as a uh, as a, as a thought exercise to the, the viewers at home that this is something they should keep in mind. Absolutely. So wow, so um, <laughs> interesting. So how how long does the the, the, the seminal fluid need to coagulate, dry, for it to become a fluorescible underlying? Um, it really depends on the conditions. Obviously, if you're in drier areas, it'll dry faster. It's pretty much just the water in the stain needs to evaporate, and that'll make it dry. Right, couple, right, uh, humi right humidity. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, 
do you want to talk about uh, your do you two want to get out of the way and you two talk about your research with uh, Seaman? Sure thing. Okay, great. So you're you're so you're 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 both graduate students here in the criminalistics department at Cal State LA. You're both second year? Yes. You're in your mas it's a master's program. Yes. Very good. You start first. Go okay. ahead. Tell us all about it. My thesis research is a comparison of conventional methods for detecting semen evidence compared to a newer method called YSTR technology. And I'm hoping that by this newer technique it will be more efficient and more sensitive and be able to detect semen evidence at longer time intervals in between the act, which is oral copulation, and uh, from the time of collection and that it's actually tested. If it is more determined to be more efficient, then it might be a better method to go uh, with in the crime lab uh, to do instead of conventional methods that are used now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of sneak back into front here. So Kristen, I, I guess one, we, we've talked about crime scenes. We both talked about both, both crime scenes and the lab. Uh, but there is, for uh, sexual assault, another uh, area, another uh, scenario, which is the, the hospital, yes. right? A, a woman is admitted to the hospital, she's taken from a crime scene. So what, how is maybe what you're studying might improve methods of collection? So if you could maybe riff on that for a second. Okay, so if there is a victim who has been forced to perform oral copulation and they are examined in a medical facility by a physician or a forensic nurse, they will swap areas of the body, such as the vagina, the rectum, and if it is oral copulation that the victim reports, then they, their mouth would also be swabbed, and from there those swabs would go on to be tested. So that is where my thesis research comes into play, is that that swab usually goes through three conventional tests uh, for enzymes that are within the seminal fluid, as well as looking for sperm cells. And so I'm hoping that my method, you looking into the YSTRs, which is Examining the Y chromosome DNA uh, that is specific only to males, uh, detecting it as well as quantifying it prior to DNA analysis. Uh, I'm hoping that it is a more efficient method. And that way, if it is determined to be more efficient, then potentially it could help with the backlog in sexual assault evidence. And um, is is the uh, collection of sexual assault evidence, is, that, is there a lot of collection in the hospital at, at uh, ERs? Mm -hmm. from, so, okay. Uh, Stacy, do you want to pick up that theme? Or we're in the, well, maybe not. We're in the, we're not in the ER, but but right. just the sexual assault kits for, uh, well, we talked about this in the last video, live uh, people that are still alive. Right. So let's and and maybe another video will be for uh, dead, uh, for cadavers. But uh, live, uh, a woman's alive. She's been reported sexual assault. Uh, mouth mouthwash. Right. So and very similar to Kristen's, uh, my thesis is also a method study, comparison of two methods. And um, what, what we're looking to do is that in the sexual assault kits, you just need to have at least one sperm head or male DNA to prove that there was contact between the victim and the assailant. This doesn't necessarily prove that there was a forced rape or forced or population, but it does prove that there was at least the minimum of contact. So the standard method, which Christian talked about, was swabbing. But I'm going to be testing a water-based mouthwash rinse in the hopes that it's a um, it's less invasive procedure for the victim. Um, this way it will recover more sperm evidence in the mouth. Very good, very good. And um, is there anything we've missed? I don't know. I don't think we have. No. Say good, say good night to the viewers at home, and and, and, and good night. Good night. And we'll 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 see we'll see what the next crime lab, which is coming up April seventeenth. Yeah. That's and that's going to focus on trace. Yes. So not a lot, uh, some on blood and semen, but a lot of uh, hair and fiber evidence. Mm -hmm. And so so stay tuned. Thank you very much, girl. Thank very you. good. Here, here we are just clean, cleaning up. Everything just goes in the bin. Okay. I, of course, um, have completely failed to uh, observe proper protocol and remove my gloves without <laughs> touching my skin. I completely bungled that. Uh, but maybe some practice. There we go. But you're impressed that I, I knew that. You're impressed that I actually yeah. failed to do that without contaminating my skin. I, I thought about it. Practice. Bye-bye. <laughs>